Many kids struggle with certain ki- certain subjects in school. Uh, some kids just struggle with everything. And for those kids, just very definitely, we want to check their vision to make sure that, that that's not the reason. Um, but sometimes people are actually very good in math, but struggle with reading. So uh, math has very different visual demands than reading. Uh, so for reading, you do need to, when you're first learning how to read, you need to be able to see clearly, you need to be able to look at whatever the person is talking about or look at the letters and um, and understand what they are and remember how the sounds match. Uh, once you start reading for learning, so around the end of second grade, third grade, you need to start being able to read a lot longer and more material and the print size gets smaller. Um, so we see many kids that come in when they're five or six or seven because they're just struggling to learn to read. And many kids who were excellent at learning how to read, but now third grade comes or uh, when they need to start reading longer and now they have all sorts of problems with comprehension. Uh, so a person who has trouble with using their eyes together, they have trouble converging, bringing their eyes together, uh, most people that have that have a great difficulty remembering what they read. So a lot of times they can actually do it, but they read it, they have to read it again and again to be able to remember it. Once you work on that and fix that so that their eyes work together, then being able to remember what they read comes much easier. Many patients come in because of difficulty with losing their place when they read. So when somebody has a problem with losing their place, we really need to check several aspects about how their eyes are working. It could be that they're just having trouble moving their eyes from one letter to another, uh, or one word to another, or group of words. Uh, It could be that they're having trouble using both eyes together. And so as they're moving across the page, their eyes uh, are having trouble both looking at the same place. And so sometimes that gets them confused about what they're seeing. Um, So they might skip lines, reread lines. Uh, A kid yesterday was saying that he adds endings onto words. They're not there, but he says them. (laughs) So... Uh, We want to look at, those are the two main things when people lose their place, but another thing is how well they can use their peripheral vision and how much space they can take in. So if you can only handle looking at one letter at a time, then it's really hard to keep your place when you read, where if you can look at the whole page and see groups of words and move your eyes efficiently from a group of word to another, then you can read very quickly and it's much easier to keep your place. So math is something that a lot of people wouldn't really think of as being related to vision, Uh, but math is really all about space. Um, Numbers take up a certain amount of space. Um, Five is bigger than two. Uh, So just being able to understand what numbers are and what they mean and doing things like adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing, being able to understand what those really are and what they mean in the real world is a spatial concept. So if you have difficulty with uh, depth perception and spatial understanding, then it makes it much more difficult to to understand what math is all about. on another level, being able to memorize different math facts uh, involves visualization. Um, and so being able to use visual pictures and uh, connect things in that kind of way is really helpful for math. Uh, another thing, we see kids who fail math tests because they can't see the signs on the, on the papers. So the, uh, uh, I had a patient once who had Uh, failed a test on decimals because she couldn't see the dots and so she had no idea. They made it bigger and she got every single question correct. So that would be something to to look at. 
a different part of math is geometry, which involves a lot of understanding of angles and the relationships of, of shapes. And th so we see many kids who have difficulty with, with some spatial relations, uh, things with vision, who would have a great deal of difficulty with geometry. Um, so that has some very specific visual perceptual skills that are things that you can learn um, that we can uh, often help people have a better understanding. For handwriting, one thing that's really important to understand is that your vision should be the leader for your hand. So if your visual system isn't working very well, for instance, someone who gets very fatigued with looking at details, then it's very difficult for them to keep looking at the page long enough to have good handwriting. So a lot of those people, you'll see that their handwriting starts out pretty decently, but then it just gets worse and worse the more that they do it. Some people have great difficulty writing on the line or keeping their spacing correctly. And uh, those, if they have trouble writing on the line, then their, their visual system isn't leading the way with being able to put that precisely where you want. Um, if someone has difficulty with handwriting, you do have to make sure that they have good fine motor skills as well. So it isn't always a vision problem, um, but that's something that, that we would look at to see if it, is it vision, is it their hand. If it's their hand, then we refer them to somebody like an occupational therapist. Uh, we see many kids who have difficulty with being able to put their thoughts on paper. Many of the kids are very good verbally, so they can tell a story very easily, but when it comes to actually putting it down, uh, they have difficulty. So those sometimes that is just the physical part of the looking, that being able to look and keep their eyes looking and do the writing at the same time as they're thinking about what they want to write is just too much to handle. For those kids, if we just get their vision working, then sometimes that solves the problem. Uh, some people need some help working on visualization and being able to uh, think about their whole story and then all the parts and organize it in their mind so that they can bring it and put it out in a, in a logical and sequential manner. And to me, that's, it is a very high level of using your vision, but uh, it is part of a vision. Uh, and sometimes if the people have physical problems with how their eyes work, then it's very difficult for them to learn how to do that. A teacher in the classroom will have, if they're working with a student with vision problems and can see the student struggling, there are some simple things that can be done to make life easier for the child. So probably the first thing is just understanding that the print size makes a huge difference to how easy it is to see. So just making sure that things are big enough can make things much easier. The other thing is making sure that things are spread out on the page. So a lot of small print crowded together is very difficult to see, even for somebody with good visual skills. So as someone who's struggling, those are some very simple things that they can do. Um, another thing is that uh, there's actually a lot of research from, uh, that's been repeated that using a slanted work surface is much easier for someone to see than when it's, when it's flat on a desk. So um, it used to be that desks all were slanted, um, and now that is very rare. But uh, if you just take a piece of paper with writing on it and tilt it, you know, you're naturally going to hold it tilted because it's easier to see. So anybody that has a vision problem, uh, giving them a slant board or a slanted surface or finding a way to prop up things on uh, the desk. Uh, a three inch ring binder is about the right angle uh, to make writing easier and to make reading easier. Um, another thing would be that a teacher could do is 
is if the child is really having difficulty looking back and forth to copy things from the board, is to reduce the amount of copying they need to do um, to keep it to just essentials or to even let them copy something from their desk um, and not have to look all the way back and forth to the board.